Amen. Well, so we are continuing in the series, Heaven, Let's Talk About It. And so um, as I've been mentioning, we're digging deeper into the scriptures um, concerning heaven. We are going to look at the gospel of Matthew chapter 13. Uh, Many of y'all are familiar with this passage. It's actually a passage of scripture where Jesus is using the terminology and the phrasing, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like, and then he proceeds to teach in the form of parables. And so um, my goal initially as I was preparing for this message was to go through a couple of parables uh, this morning, but then like I said, in in my study and in my prayer time, the Lord kind of gave me a an aha moment, and that's what I really want us to share or to share with you today. And honestly, even though the message has many points to a certain degree, there's really one major point that we're going to emphasize, and and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. So turn, if you haven't already, to Matthew chapter 13, and uh, we're going to see what Jesus, the Son of God, said concerning the kingdom of heaven and what it is like. Now, a big takeaway that kind of is an overarching of this entire series on what heaven, let's talk about it, is all about, is that heaven is to be a part of our evangelistic outreach. Heaven is to be on our lips. It is to be an emphasis when we are going about our daily lives and we are finding ourselves either intentionally or unintentionally in our community having conversation with people, friends, family, co-workers, uh, whoever, and we have that nudge by the Holy Spirit to start witnessing or to start talking about Jesus, I want to encourage you to also talk about heaven. Talk about heaven because heaven is eternity, and it is a long time that we are going to be there, right? So, yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But he's the way to what? He's the way to heaven. He is the way for us to be in the presence of our Heavenly Father for eternity. Right? Yes, praise God, our sins are forgiven. And maybe we can walk while here on this earth with a little bit more pep in our step because we're not struggling with, per se, this, the shame of sin and guilt because we know, yay, praise God, our sins are forgiven. But don't stop there. Think about eternity. Think about the fact that this is not our home. Eternity is our home. And that's what the people out there need to hear as well. Yes, that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. And yes, they don't have to be bound by chains. And yes, they they aren't going to have to go to hell should they choose Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But with all of that, where does it point to? It points to heaven, eternity with God the Father. Amen. So back to Matthew 13. The setting, Jesus is positioned as the teacher, right? Even some of them called him rabbi or or master. His disciples are eager to understand all that Jesus is sharing. I mean, by this time, he's already had his Sermon on the Mount. He's already performed some miracles. There's already been some things that the disciples have witnessed and watched. And here we see that whether it's a large group of people or whether it's just the smaller group of his disciples. Jesus is speaking truth, and he is desiring for them to have greater understanding. He also understands that even though he's speaking truth and he's telling parables, that there's going to be people that aren't going to get it. There's going to be people that just straight up aren't going to understand. Now, Why parables? What is a parable? A parable is a story that has a similar proximity to the truth that Jesus is trying to present. And so many times these parables were something that the culture or the people of the time could understand and grasp. And so when we are studying about 
these parables when Jesus opens things up and he says the kingdom of heaven is like and then he likens it to something that they're familiar with. The hope is that their eyes will open, their ears will hear and that their hearts will understand the truth of what Jesus is saying. Now, again, the reality of it, and we're going to read here in a second, is that not everybody understands. Not everybody's eyes see, not everybody's ears hear and understand clearly what Jesus is trying to communicate. And so that's what we're going to start here in Matthew 13. Starting in verse 1, it says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore. So everybody got a picture of what's going on here? You know, if you want to try to put yourself in the in the storyline, maybe even here locally, it would be like us all going to the river, and they're the Guadalupe, and we're all on the side, and Jesus had just sat down, come out of the house, sat down, and all of a sudden there's hundreds of people gathered around, large crowds, so much so that Jesus is like, look, pull up a, a canoe or, you know, some boat of some sort, get in it, and he kind of goes off a little bit so that he's more secluded. He's not just the crowd all around him. And he sits down, and it says that he starts teaching. He says in verse 3, Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Okay, so Jesus is telling these parables, right? And he talks about this farmer going out, planting seed, and we know the story. The seed lands on all kinds of different soils, right? Verse 10, it says, The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? That's a valid question. It's like, Jesus, why, why are you choosing? Why don't you just come out and say it? You know, don't, how many of y'all have ever dealt that with somebody? My wife, Nicole, she often accuses me of beating around the bush, right? Just just get to the point, Ryan. Just, well, I'm a preacher. I got to build it up. No, it's, it's, you know, get to the point. And so that's where the disciples, they were chomping at the bit. They were like, Jesus, why, why don't you just tell it like it is? And why are you telling this to the people in parables? And Jesus proceeds to answer. He replied, because the knowledge of of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Verse 15 is key here. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, that's a pretty important word right there. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Do you see the condition here? The influencing factor of what takes place with people as to whether they can see or whether they can hear, whether they understand with their hearts. It's a condition of their hearts. So Jesus can be speaking truth, 
But unless their hearts are good soil and good ground to receive that truth, they never make it to the point of understanding. They don't get it. So he tells us to them in verse 18, he says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom, all right, and that's what we're supposed to be out communicating and speaking, right, the gospel message, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. Did y'all catch that? So this is a person that fully hears and receives it. Their heart is ready. They receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Verse 22, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and this deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. All right? So we see this. Again, Jesus is teaching the disciples. He's teaching the people, speaking in parables. He's setting the precedence and the clarification that some people are going to understand and get it. Some people aren't. And that's hard for us to wrap our minds and our hearts around sometimes, isn't it? Because like God, we want all to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And yet, there will be those that will hear the truth and will still choose, because of calloused hearts, not to receive the gift of eternity with him. So callous, that word callous, I looked it up, and it breaks down. It's a thickening, or it even mentions fatty. Imagine a fatty heart, a thickened heart. Some versions say dull, where it's dull. In other words, it's not been sharpened. I hesitate to say this, but again, another descriptive of this particular word callous was to make stupid. That's a, that's a bad word in our household, so I hesitate to say it from the pulpit. But the reality of it is, it's people that now are no longer ignorant because they've received knowledge, but they're still choosing to not line themselves up with that truth. That's a pretty, I'll use the word dumb, decision, right? So a heart that has heard truth and has heard you know, the way, and yet, for whatever various reasons, a calloused heart saying, you know what, I'm still not going to receive that, or I'm not going to choose that. And Jesus makes it clear that there's a variety of soils. And, and as we read these soils, how many of y'all can, in your own mind, think of somebody that fits that category? Maybe even sometimes we find ourselves in our season, in our journey of our relationship with God saying, you know, I can see a season in my life where I was this kind of a soil. I wasn't exactly going deeper with God. I wasn't really being rooted in him. And I found situations that whenever the circumstances of life came up, I worried about them and it ended up choking me out and I needed to call upon the Lord again. Right. So there's those dynamics. But ultimately, what this is talking about here and what Jesus is saying is that the kingdom of heaven is like this in terms of the gospel message going forward. And that there's only one soil that fully receives that's the good soil. Now, here's the aha moment, okay? And I'm going to have another 
scripture for us to look at. It says that some will see and hear with understanding in their heart. Some will see and never perceive or hear and never truly understand. There are people who are represented in every type of soil. Can we all agree with that? Right? This is the big takeaway, and we're 10 minutes till 12, but I want you to think about this. This was the download that God hit me. I've heard this preached time and time again, and this is what God spoke to my heart. He said, quit trying to predetermine what soil is worthy of his seed. Quit trying to predetermine what soil is is worthy of his seed. None of us are worthy of the gospel message, yet God has sprinkled it out on all kinds of soil, on all kinds of people, all kinds of hearts. And I would dare say that we as the church, not just RLF, but in large, we have in some ways taken the place of the farmer and said, you know what, that soil over there, I don't know that I want them to be a part of the kingdom. And so I don't know that they're worthy of the good news. But this soil over here, they look promising. So let's put our attention, let's sow there really heavily. Is that what the scripture says? Is that what Jesus is saying when he's talking about the kingdom of heaven is like? No, he's saying that he is the farmer. He is the one scattering the seed. And yes, there is going to be soil that's not going to get it. But we as the church like him are supposed to cast seed everywhere we go. We are supposed to speak the truth in love. We are supposed to speak heaven. We are supposed to point to Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. We are supposed to glorify him in everything that we say and do. And guess what? It's going to work with some people. It's going to offend others. And there's going to be some people that are just going to flat out choose not to receive the seed that is sown. We have to be okay with that. We also have to realize that whenever we don't see progress from certain individuals that we planted seed in, that we don't give up sowing seed. We have to keep being about the Father's business. And it's going to look different. But our responsibility is to do simply to plant the seed and to water the seed. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. Go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. When Paul is writing the Corinthians... First Corinthians three, the church and its leaders. And Paul is actually trying to correct a situation where you have different groupings of the church. that are going after this person and after that person and so forth and so on. And and we can get into that if you all want to. But the reality of it is Paul is trying to bring it back into focus. And in verse five, he says, what after all is Apollos and what is Paul only servants through whom You came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. But only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. And they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wide, wise builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul takes it right back to who Jesus is. This kingdom of heaven, let's talk about it, factor, is a realization that regardless of what means or method we communicate it, it all has to land and point back to Jesus. He is our foundation. He is the cornerstone, 
right? And Paul is saying, look, we all have a purpose. But ultimately, it is God who brings the growth. Yes, we are to have eyes to see for the harvest is ripe and ready. And we need to take that moment when the Holy Spirit prompts and says, you know what? Now's the time to ask them to receive Jesus into their hearts. Do it. But even greater than that, be obedient in the small things and say, you know what? I'm going to continue to plant seeds. And I might see the fullness of it here on earth, and I might not. But I'm going to release that responsibility into the Lord's hands. And I'm going to water it, and I'm going to plant it. Now, we have a garden, and Ethan has been planting a garden right alongside Nicole and myself. And we are so thankful the Lord has blessed us with the rains that we've received and just the produce that's been coming forth and all of that. You know, so we did our part. We planted the seed. We've been watering the plants. But you know what? Me standing there going, grow, 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 grow. That's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. I can tell that plant to grow all day long, and it won't do anything because of me. God is the reason for the growth. And so when we properly acknowledge our roles and responsibilities, just as Jesus was pointing out and saying the kingdom of heaven is like, and he speaks to this parable of the different soils, the challenge that the Lord laid on my heart and I want to lay on your heart is don't stop sowing seed and keep on watering and watch what God grows for his kingdom purposes. And should you be blessed to reap a harvest by going out and evangelizing and, and, and even having that conversation with someone out of sensitivity and out of obedience to what the Lord is saying, you know, you know, you are so close to just asking God into your heart. Do you want to do that today? Do you want to start following Jesus and being his disciple? I'll be more than happy to sit down and talk with you. You know, do it. But, you know, something as small as a smile, saying God bless you, helping a need when you see a need and you step forward and you meet that need in the name of Jesus what does the scripture say? Even to give a cup of cold water in my name. Think about what that accomplishes, right? So for his kingdom purposes, instead of us looking at situations and even, I dare say, riding off the soil and saying, you know what? That soil is way too hard. They will never get it. Don't do that. God is able. Never give up on what he is able to do. Regardless of how challenging the soil is, trust in the Lord. Now, I'm going to just be a real, real with you. Obedience is key. Because you do need to use wisdom. Whenever you're casting that seed and you're speaking truth, there is value to seeing the receptivity of the people that you're speaking life into. And there might come a point in time where out of respect, you're not continuing to try to poke seed in their life. But you say, you know what? I spoke a word. I'm going to step away. But guess what? Prayer. Prayer is the watering that you get to do at that point in time. It's not that you have to circle back around and always jab that seed deep down further into their heart. Because, again, a calloused heart is not going to hear. Here's another practical thing. We talk about prayer. If you know, if you're privileged enough to know you're about to enter into a setting or a group of people to where because of relationship, regardless of how deep or shallow it is, you know that they have verbally said, I don't believe there's a God or I don't believe in Jesus. I believe in. Let the Holy Spirit lead. And by doing that, what I'm saying is before you even step foot into that conversation, quieten your spirit and say, God, I want your heart for this person. I want your perspective. Holy Spirit, 
can you remove any blockage, any demonic activity, anything that would be hindering them from being able to receive your truth? Can you make their heart good ground so that when I speak truth, that they would be able to receive it in love? And you pray that. But how many of us are doing that? It takes conditioning, it takes repetition, and it takes a willingness to say, you know what, instead of me just in my own puffed up righteousness and trying to show them the way that they're wrong and that I'm right, that we dial it back and say, God, I want to see them the way that you see them. And we know that you desire for them to know the truth. Help me speak your words. Holy Spirit, go in and make a way where there seems to be no way. And whatever I say, let it clear you and let it have its effect. But then release it and trust. And then pray and watch. And I haven't even gotten to the other parables, but I'm excited about the other things around the corner, talking about the mustard seed and talking about the, the, the weeds and the wheat growing up together. There's some really amazing things that God has spoken through his word concerning the kingdom of heaven and how we, his body, are supposed to be out about, just like Jesus, doing the Father's business. Now, got just a couple minutes before I need to close this off. I'm going to say this gently and carefully. When Paul was addressing the church in Corinth, and again, it's natural that we have a tendency to follow those that we hear the truth from or that feed our spirit, right? And maybe we'll bring it to current day of maybe some teachers that we love, that maybe there's some favorites, maybe there's some, some particular areas of God's word that you just really are drawn to. And there's a teacher that emphasizes those things. And you have a tendency to look them up on YouTube or, or look them up in their Bible studies and glean from what they're learning. All that's good and fine as long as it's pointing back to Jesus and his word and that it's built on God's word because this is what the world sees. They see churches and they see individuals that claim to be Christians and yet they're glorifying this ministry or that ministry or this situation or this church's name. We have to be careful that, yes, we are so thankful that God sends prophets and teachers and pastors. That's the fivefold ministry. But we have to be mindful that there is a lost world out there and if we're glorifying a name or a ministry above and beyond the simplistic gospel found in Scripture about Jesus, there's a very high tendency that that person is not going to get it. That or worst case scenario, they're going to look up and they're going to see different things that are contradictory because man, as best as we try, we still fall short. And for every person that is excited about a ministry, there's somebody else that's, that's trying to detract away from it. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? So all that to be said, maturity and growth glean from those that are teaching. There are some gifted individuals. I'm not going to start name dropping, but you know what I'm saying. All of it needs to point back as Paul expressed here. Some plant seeds, some water it, but the foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen? So let that be the filter. When we are talking about heaven, when we're talking about Jesus and the gospel, realize it's not always going to land on good soil. Be at peace about that and trust and pray. But then be faithful. Be faithful to plant the seed and be faithful to water whenever God tells you to water. Amen? All right, why don't we stand? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. And we thank you that you bring the increase. You bring the growth. Lord, it's hard to see those that have heard the truth, 
and yet it's just not getting through. I just want to pray for those right now. Maybe, maybe as I'm saying this, you're thinking of a lost family member or a lost loved one. And it's been hard. You've lived in front of them to the best of your ability, a life out of obedience to the scripture. Maybe you've sacrificially loved them. You have tried your best to communicate verbally the scriptures, spoken the truth, and yet it just still has not taken a hold. It has not rooted in such a way to where there is now produce. There's now harvest happening in their hearts. So I just want to pray even right now, Lord, for, for the lost, for those that we know by name, and you know, God, that it seems like it's hard soil, or maybe they've one time acknowledged you and even received the gospel with joy, but life had a way of rearing its ugly head and choking them out, and they've now turned away. Lord, we call for the prodigals to come home. Lord, we pray for your truth to take root in people's hearts. And that, Lord, they would fall in love with you. That each one of us would fall more and more in love with you every single day. But, Lord, help us to speak your words. Help us to cast seed that represents you the best. Help our seed to be heaven seed. Not political speed, seed, not just opinion seed, not just I have a right to do this seed, but that the seed we sow is heaven seed. Because that is the seed that will make difference for eternity. So we trust in you. I pray, God, you would go with us now and that we will, in fact, see harvest. Lord, we will one day be able to truly understand all that you are doing throughout your kingdom because we will find ourselves in heaven with you. We pray for the lost. Get them home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, bless y'all. Love you. Again, if you feel... Uh